Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. I'm a lot less croaky today, so I'm on the mend, thankfully, and we're going to start things off with a little update regarding 3D Mark. So basically, we have a new benchmarking feature being added. It is specifically developed to test variable rate shading performance, and also allows you to look at image quality differences. So you can basically look yourself at the performance impact and the quality differences associated with the more aggressive, or if you so desire, less aggressive variable rate shading settings. Now you will be seeing their sort of demo for this playing on this particular segment but you will find that linked in the description below if you wish to have a proper look yourself. For those of you wondering what you actually need to run this test you will need the latest version of Windows which is 1903 or later and of course a DirectX 12 GPU that supports tier 1 VRS and the additional shading rate supported capability. So this would be say Touring for example. Now it is available as a free update for the 3D Mark Advanced Edition, or if you don't actually have it, it's actually heavily reduced. Go check it out if you so desire. Again, their demo is linked below. So, with that out of the way, let's move on to Navi. And we have a benchmark which has surfaced thanks to Komachi on Twitter. Now they have basically said that this is for GFX 1012, which is Navi 14. And you can see the compute performance and everything about this on screen for yourself. So the one of the things should I say that you can take away from this is the compute units, which is actually going to be 24. Now I know it does say 12, but we've discussed this previously where CompuBench is just not reading this GPU right and it's actually showing half of what it should be. So again, it will be 24 compute units for Navi. But the most interesting thing other than that that we can take away from this is the comparison which you can now see on screen. Where as you can see, it is matching up pretty much exactly in, well not exactly, but it is mirroring fairly closely, I suppose I should say, the Radeon RX 570. So we are definitely seeing a lower end GPU here. And again, not really surprised to see this, to be honest, because while I've said many times that yes, we can talk a lot about big Navi, which I'm sure we're all very excited to see more about, you know, what it actually is, it, what specs are we gonna see, what performance are we gonna see, how is it gonna match up to Turing, all that sort of stuff. But AMD also need to flesh out the lower end side of things, you know, that is something they've done quite well with Polaris, having a really strong lower end side of their uh, GPU SKU lineup that's accessible in terms of price, but still gives decent performance, etc, etc, etc. So obviously this is just one benchmark, so don't take this as like, yep, okay, set in stone, boys, you know, it's going to be RX 570 level performance in all cases, obviously that's not going to be true. But it is interesting that it is comparing against the 570 in this particular instance. Speaking of Navi, I've got an update regarding Navi 14, which may just be coming a bit sooner than we all expected, because we have a possible sign that it's going to be coming out in Q4 of this year. And this is all coming to us thanks to the fact that support for Navi 14 is apparently going to be backported to the Mesa 19.2 release, which is due out in a few weeks. And this is going to be coming out alongside the other Autumn Linux distribution updates, and it's going to be coming alongside Fedora 31, Ubuntu 19.2, point ten and so on. Now again this does not point towards at least a potential for Navi 14 to come out in Q4 of this year especially because this was not a trivial thing for them to add on. It requires a fair amount of work as it needed to fix up a few things including legacy pipeline support. But regardless of all the behind the curtain stuff again the more important thing to take away from this is while it's far from confirmed it does at least add some credibility to the idea that Navi 14 is coming out in Q4 of this year. So we've been talking a lot about both the Xbox Scarlet from Microsoft and of course the PlayStation 5 from Sony. We know a fair bit about the specs of the PlayStation 5 and of course we know a little bit here and there about the Xbox Scarlet but that is a little more mysterious but of course we do know that ray tracing is going to be coming to consoles for the first time with this next generation and 8K resolutions. Now obviously Microsoft have been keen to say that you know they are really pushing the playability of things as well as the frame rate, which has definitely been comforting for me to hear because again I was starting to get concerned that they're just focusing too much on resolution. Obviously 8K, 4K, all very impressive and sounds good in marketing blurbs, but I personally feel playability is more well important. I would rather have a higher frame rate as I've discussed 
basically ad nauseum, and I'm sure you're all sick of me saying it. But basically, when he was at Gamescom, when speaking to Heiser Online, Aaron Greenberg was asked whether or not Project Scarlet would have 8K. Now, this was translated by Google, so take a pinch of salt. However, he said, quote, he does not know anyone developing 8K computer games. 8K is more of a technical specification that will not define the upcoming console generation. A big 8K games offer is not to be expected apart from the availability of 8K television. So, essentially what he's saying here, at least from what I'm taking from it, is that, yes, it's going to have 8K capabilities in terms of, say, you know, Netflix, just for example. But, is anyone really going to make an 8K video game? Mm, probably not, so... We should not expect a big 8K game offering. But he seems much more confident about 4K being a thing. Or I suppose I should say more of a common thing, because obviously it's already a thing in the current console generation with the Pro and the Xbox One X. So he said, quote, After all, games are supposed to run in native 4K compared to the current Xbox One X. Significantly higher computing and graphics performance developers are no longer required to make as many compromises as with the current generation of consoles, whose bottleneck is the relatively low process of performance. Xbox Scarlet will be able to spend games in 4K and up to 120 FPS. Players could also expect larger game worlds and higher visibility in next-gen games. In addition, the load times of the future console will be noticeably lower, which is partly due to the standard integrated SSD. So, basically, no 8K game, well, no, not to say zero 8K games, but no big 8K game offerings is what he said, but still very, very confident in hammering home that 4K 120. We'll see if they can live up to that, especially on the more demanding games, but I'll be happy with 4K 60, to be honest. I'll be happy with 60 FPS solid, even without the slightly lower resolution, as I've said many, many times. So we're going to finish things up today with a touch of gaming news regarding Epic Games and Dark. So a bit of a backstory, just in case you missed the kerfuffle surrounding this, but you probably have seen it because it was about a week and a half ago that this initially happened. But the long and short of it is that the game Dark, which is a bit of a horror-themed puzzle game, turned down an Epic exclusivity deal, and this was revealed by the developer, the solo developer behind Unfold Games, the guys who made Dark. And he said, quote, on July 30th, I was contacted by the Epic Store proposing that I enter into an exclusivity agreement with them instead of releasing Dark on Steam. They made it clear that releasing Dark non-exclusively is not an option. I rejected their offer before we had a chance to talk about money. And he went on to say, quote, I wish the Epic Store would allow indie games to be sold there non-exclusively, as they do have larger, still unreleased games like Cyberpunk 2077, so players can enjoy what they want. A choice. And given the recent controversy surrounding Epic Games and Epic Games Store and all the exclusivity deals that they've actually gotten, sometimes at a last minute, pretty much pulling the rug out from underneath players' feet, probably a wise decision. Now, there's a bit of an update to this, because there was a tweet from Tim Sweeney, which basically says, quote, We're happy to see Dark succeed because it's a great game and it deserves success. That's why we contacted them to explore exclusivity. And then Unfold Games, basically, well... They've challenged Epic Games to <laughs> a very brazen duel, I have to admit. I uh, admire this guy's moxie, I really do. Because he said, quote, Tim, I'm glad to hear that. If you change your mind and accept Dark to your store non-exclusively, I'll donate 100% of my EGS revenue to a charity. If you accept, the charity can be picked by the gaming's community at a later date. Now, this is obviously a bit of a PR stunt, but to be honest, I don't care. This is great because, well, I appreciate what Epic Games are trying to do with their store. You know, we do need a decent competitor to Steam. Obviously, GOG exists. I'm aware of that. And they are a really, really good platform. I've got a, quite a few games on there myself. Way too many. My PC game collection is frankly obscene. But regardless, we need, you know, competition. Competition is good. It breeds innovation, as I've said many, many times. But... Obviously, when they're allowing big games like, say, Cyberpunk or whoever to be on their store and also be on Steam, you kind of would hope that it would be the case for indies. Now, obviously, I'm not saying they're wrong to say, hey, would you be interested in exclusivity? That's cool. Maybe don't do it just before the game's going to come out, though. Um, but, you know, just take that out of the equation. They're not wrong to approach them about exclusivity. Fair enough. To say that they, it's either exclusivity or nothing at all, especially before the game comes out, Mm. Yeah, not really keen on that one, Tim, not going to lie to you. So, 
Tim is obviously going to be a bit stuck for how to respond to this one. Either he does or he doesn't. And I'll be very curious to see which one it is. And if he does reply, how is it going to be? <laughs> Again, Unfold Games, uh, a well-deserved clap there. So, let me know your thoughts on everything discussed in this video. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, the support is highly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.